Good Sabbath. It is my honor and my privilege to bring the Seventh-day Baptist Missionary Society Missions Week message to you. And this week, we've heard, we've learned about missions. We, we have heard why you, I, in the church in general, why we're an integral part of the Great Commission, the sharing of the gospel of Jesus. We know that Jesus told us to go and make disciples. Go. That means being an active participant in the expansion of his kingdom. It is not a recommendation. It is a command. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. And that's what we are here to do. Matthew 28 says this. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the Great Commission to go. But now the question is, okay, we get this command from Jesus. He's telling us what to do. Now, how do we do it? How do we fulfill the Great Commission? And that is in part by developing habits, by making intentional decisions that pave the way to the spreading of the gospel. That means when we start making intentional daily decisions, then these daily decisions become habits. And if we have intentional decisions that align to the Word of God, then we're able to make an impact and develop habits to be a global Christian. So I'm going to read a quote from C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis said, Good and evil both increase our compound interest. That is why the little decisions that you and I make every day are of such infinite importance. We're talking about the importance of making daily decisions. So now my question to you is, what daily decisions are you making to fulfill the Great Commission? Again, what daily decisions are you making to fulfill the Great Commission and today, I'm going to briefly talk about five decisions, five habits that will help us cultivate the missional lifestyle that we need to develop. And these five building blocks for a, a missional lifestyle are pray, welcome, go, send, and mobilize. Again, pray, Welcome, go, send, and mobilize. So let's start with prayer. I think you and I agree that prayer is needed here in the U.S. and all over the world. We need prayer. It is important because the Bible tells us multiple times of how Jesus tells his disciples first to pray and then do something about others. First pray, and then take the message of salvation to others. First pray, and then serve others. So just to name one example, in Matthew 9. If we go to Matthew 9, it says, Jesus is talking to his disciples when he saw crowds. A lot of people. And the Bible says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Prayer is important because as we see Jesus, so Jesus encounters his people, he feels compassion for them, but his first move was not to do something about them, was not to feed them, 
or heal them. Their, his first move was to pray. Was to pray. And, and we see in examples that we need to pray. And when we pray for mission, when we pray for other people, when we pray for your community, it helps us align first with what God wants us to do. And then we are able to develop compassion for others. So a prayer helps us align with God and increases our compassion for others. And that's why prayer is important to develop a missional lifestyle. Now, so first pray. The second habit of a global Christian is welcome. To welcome others. Welcome others is about developing a habit of sharing the good news of Jesus with others in your community. That includes loving on immigrants, loving on, on people from all around you. And so you don't necessarily need to go to other countries. You don't need, necessarily need to go to other parts of the world to share the love of Jesus when you already have multiple opportunities here in your community to do missions, to serve those who come here. So in this context, we're not going there to share the gospel of Jesus. They are coming to us. So we need to be a welcoming community. We as Christians, we are called to love our neighbors, regardless of who they are or where they come from. And you know, and what is that? Why is that? Because Jesus said, I was a stranger and you invited me in. So we, we have these habits of a global Christian. These daily actions to build a missional lifestyle, a global Christian. Pray. Welcome. The third one is go. Jesus said, go and make disciples to the nations. Go and preach the good news of Jesus and actively seek opportunities to tell others about who he is. Seek these opportunities even if it makes you go out of your comfort zone. The Apostle Paul said this in Romans. Romans 10, verse 14. How can they call upon the one in whom they have not believed? How can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? How can they hear without someone preaching to them? Go and make disciples, whether you go across town or across the world. Let the light of Jesus shine through you and be the kind of person that makes disciples. We need people who are brave. We need people who are brave enough to be the light in the darkness because Jesus calls us to be the light in the darkness. It is not enough to be the light in the church. It is not enough to be the light in the church when Jesus called us to be a light in the darkness, to change society from within. And that's what we're to do. Be the light in the darkness. The fourth point is send. Romans 10, 14, 10 15 says this. And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Sending. Send is about sending missionaries to the field. It is about investing in the kingdom of God. It is about sending your prayers, sending your finances, supporting others, being an active participant in the lives of others and serve them, feel them, make them feel loved and encouraged. 
sending is being an active participant in the global movement of missions. And then you send your love, your prayers, your finances. You encourage missionaries. And we do that through your local church, through the Seventh-day Baptist Missionary Society, through other great organizations. But when, but when you invest in others, when you invest in sending missionaries or other gifts or talents that God has given you, you are investing in the kingdom of God. So we have pray, we have welcome, we have go, we have send, and the last one, and the last habit of a global Christian is to mobilize. Mobilize. I'm going to read a quote from Wesley Turles. It says, Mobilization is any process by which God's people, so that is you and I, keep moving and growing until they find their place for strategic involvement in the task of completing world evangelization. Jesus didn't commission just one disciple to preach the gospel. He commissioned his church. He commissioned you and I. So mobilization is, a found, is about finding your place in the missional work. The missional work is like a big puzzle. And you are that special piece that the global mission world needs. It's about, it's about finding your spot, your place in this global movement of missions. It's about being engaged in the global church in one way or another. Because when you are engaged and you find your place in missions, you are fulfilling the Great Commission for God's glory. In 2018, the Barna Group published an article saying that 51% of Christians, of churchgoers, of those who go to church every week, 51% didn't know what the Great Commission was. The Great Commission is to go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And how do we do that? In part, by praying for others. In part, by welcoming those who come here. By showing the love of Christ through your actions. We do that by going we do that by sending others and by mobilizing, by being part of the missional work of God's church. But now, some people would say, how can I support missions when I don't have the experience? You may say, I'm not qualified. You may say, I don't have the relationship with God to shine his light. Or you can also say, I'm going to wait until everything comes together in my life. So when I have everything put together, then I'm going to reach the preach the gospel to others. After I work in my life, then I'm going to work in others. Then I'm going to help others. Or you can say, others are doing a great job. What am I going to get involved in if the gospel is being preached anyways? Let me tell you a story. This is the story of Peter. Peter was a disciple of Jesus, disciple of Messiah. I think uh, we would agree that Peter wouldn't be qualified to be a disciple according to today's standards. So the life of Peter, his story, the Bible tells us that he was a fisherman. He knew how to fish. That was his life. That was what he knew how to do. He was a fisherman. He didn't really know much about anything else. He smelled like fish. That was what he knew how to do. So one day, one day he was working with, on his fish, with his nets, and then he hears a voice. He hears a voice, and it's Jesus. Jesus tells him, 
Peter, Peter, follow me and I will make you fisher of men. Follow me and I will make you fisher of men. And that moment, a willing heart was enough. A willing heart was enough. So Peter decides to follow Jesus. They walked together. He became his disciple. They had, Jesus and Peter had a good relationship. Until one day, right before the crucifixion of Jesus, Jesus tells Peter, you are going to deny, you are going to deny me three times. Peter says, Lord, I'm not going to deny you three times. That's not even possible. No, I'm not going to do it, Lord. But the Bible tells us that, yes, right before the crucifixion of Jesus, Peter denied Jesus three times. So Peter denies him. The Bible tells us that he was hurt. So he felt bad. Peter just simply ran away. He went back to the lake to do what he knew how to do, to fish. So the, then the Bible continues with the story of Jesus' death, Jesus' crucifixion, and, Je and his resurrection. Jesus comes back to life. Jesus is alive. And now Jesus goes to find Peter to the lake. So you see the story here? Peter is running away. He's hiding. But Jesus goes and looks for Peter. He goes to find Peter. At that moment, his mistakes, his denials, his problems didn't matter anymore. His shortcomings, his, his inexperience, his excuses didn't count, didn't matter anymore because Jesus still wanted to accomplish his will through his life. So now, now we have the story. Jesus goes and meets Peter. They have a meal together and right then, Right there, Jesus asked Peter one of the most important questions in Peter's life. Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then Jesus said, then feed my sheep. And then for a second time, Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then feed my sheep. And Jesus asked this question for the third time. One time for each denial. And at that moment, in that moment, Peter's life changed. When he decided to say, yes, Lord, I'm going to take care of your sheep. I'm going to take care of others. And not because Peter was qualified. Not because he knew who the other people were. Not because he agreed with their, their political views. Not because they, they love him. Not, they, he, they, Peter didn't know all those people that he was going to make an impact. Peter said yes, because he loved Jesus. So now my question, the question Jesus may be asking you right now is, do you love me? Do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Do you love me? Then take care of my sheep. Do you love me? And how do you take care of his sheep? In part, by praying for others. By welcoming those in your community, sharing the love of Jesus with them. And then you can go and make disciples. You can also send others, send your gifts, your talents, your finances to the work of his kingdom. And by being part of the missional work, being part of the work that we are doing together as a church to reach those in our community and reach those who have not heard. Do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you because you have a plan and a purpose for my life. Lord, I say yes. Here I am, Lord. Use me to spread your love, spread your word to the nations. Help me be the light in the darkness that you want me to be. In the name of Jesus, amen. May God bless you today, and remember that you are loved.